Thank you, Madam Speaker. At this time, I'm happy to yield five minutes to my neighbor and colleague from California, Representative Mike Honda. The gentleman from California, Mr. Honda, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I thank uh, my colleague, the gentlelady from Northern California, Alan Tauscher. Like so many of my colleagues, I stand here today in opposition to President Bush's surge in Iraq. We should not have attacked Iraq in the first place, and we definitely should not escalate things further. The initial evidence for the war was flimsy at best, and realizing that, I voted against the authorization of, for war. The most recent evidence that the President has presented in support of the surge is even less credible, and I urge my colleagues to prevent the President from, from throwing more gasoline onto a fire that is already burning out of control. When I speak to veterans of the Iraq War, I become infuriated by their tales of the destruction that this President's policies have wrought in that country. Nor can they fathom why their Commander-in-Chief insists on squandering the strength of this greatest fighting force in the history of the world. While Iraq under Saddam Hussein's rule was a rogue state, an affront to American values, today Iraqi citizens are forced to endure even more severe and deadlier situations. There is no indication that Iraq was a center for international terrorism prior to President Bush's adventure there. Now, as a result of his irresponsible action, it is undeniably so. Over 3,000 brave American servicemen and women have lost their lives in Iraq, in addition to the 100,000 or more Iraqis who have been killed. 25,000 American soldiers have been injured. For what, Mr. President, for what? You have yet to answer this simple question, and I suspect that this is because you do not have an answer. There is not, nor can there be a credible answer to this utter folly. Each member of this House has tales of constituents whose lives will never be the same because of the Iraq War. In the aftermath of 9-11, one of my constituents joined the Army out of a deep sense of patriotism. One day while on patrol in Iraq, his tank drove over an explosive device, sending the vehicle 10 feet in the air. He survived, but suffered severe brain and spinal injuries. For his bravery, he was awarded the Purple Heart, multiple commendations, and other medals. After completing a service to his country, he returned home to resume his life with his wife and newly born triplets. Upon returning to work, however, he found that he had difficulty concentrating as a result of his head injury. He was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. As a result of the strain that the President's policies are placing on Veterans Administration, he, like so many of my constituents, was unable to receive a change in his benefit allowance in a timely manner so that he could continue to live in dignity. Local officials and media had to put out a call for donations to pick up where his government failed him. This brave man expected that his sacrifices would be repaid with the generosities that America promises to our veterans. Instead, he encountered a system that is overextended and ill-equipped to help him when he needed it. Other constituents have told me that when they try to call the Veterans Administration, they have to wait on hold over two hours before they can talk to a human being. Is this how we should treat those who put their lives on the line for our country? The Veterans Administration rec recently testified that it needs 13 percent increase in funding to address rising costs and increased demand, but the President's budget proposes less than half of that. And now the President wants to further escalate the strain on our already overextended system by sending more soldiers off to Iraq. I am outraged and I cannot mince my words. This is a national shame. This is not how America repays its valiant heroes. Madam Speaker, colleagues, we must stop this madness. This surge, this escalation will fail just as past surges has. This conflict requires a diplomatic and political solution, not just simply sending more troops into the fight. We cannot allow this president to shatter the lives of more of our best and brightest. It's time 
to bring our troops home. I yield back. <laughs>